Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. We are still in the uh, Gematria series, and we're up to the number 60 um, in the uh, Hebrew alphabet. The letter Samach is the 15th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It has a gematria, a numerical value of 60. Now, the number 60 relates to the symbolism of the number 6. The number 6 is associated with the complete physical expression in the natural world. This state of completion is more fully represented in the number 60. <clears throat> Here in the natural world, that opens up into six directions, conceptually expanding to reach a state of wholeness, symbolized by the number within each direction. 6 times 10, again, is 60. The letter Samach represents the idea of divine support, Samech, both in the active sense and that God provides support to man and in the passive sense, and that man relies on God. Man's confident reliance on God's support is a mainstay of Jewish belief. As Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, summarizes all of his teaching in the books of Kohelet, in chapter 12, verse 13, he ends with the word Sof Dover. The sum of the matter is, he teaches that this sum is to fear God and to adhere to his laws. Now the word Sof, sum, or end, is written with an enlarged samach uh, to emphasize the fundamental requirement of reliance on God's support based on Osios Rabbi Akiva. As I've mentioned many times, every letter in the Hebrew alphabet is found somewhere in Tanakh, both large and small. Now the roundness of the samach is seen as an allusion both to God as a supporter, who has no beginning and has no end, also to human beings who are comparable to the samach in that a round object cannot stand by itself and is apt to roll away unless it is supported. In the census that was taken in the desert of the Jewish nation when the Jews left Egypt, only those men between the ages of 20 to 60, those that were enlisted to serve in the army, were counted. The top age of service in the army was 60, which is identical to the, uh, the top age used in the laws of what we called arachin, valuations as when someone pledged the monetary value of a person as a gift to the temple treasury, and that would be the Erechon, that would be his, a, his amount that is pledged, that is assumed for him. Now the Torah specifies fixed monetary amounts based on gender and age. And uh, one bracket was de designated for men between the ages of 20 to 60. And the number 60 relates to the full expression of Klal Yisrael, of the nation of Israel the Jewish congregation. In order for the Shekhinah, for the divinity of God to rest on the Jewish nation, there needed to be at least 600,000 men between the ages of 20 to 60. This was a necessity for the Israelites to receive the Torah from God on Mount Sinai. Much like the number 10 is necessary to form a quorum, a minyan to pray to God. Significantly, this number is said to constitute the perfect national identity of Israel. And just like six signifies the extent of man's productivity in his labors during the six days of the week, 60 is similarly the age limit of man's productivity in terms of years in the physical world. In fact, the last Mishnah in chapter 5, verse number 22, the Pirkei Avot, states that the number 60 characterizes the age of what we call zikna, seniority. A person has lived past the age of 60, is considered a milestone in human life. It indicates that that person is not warranted the heavenly punishment of what we call karis. Karit is a premature death, excision. The word zakain is a contraction of the word za shekana chokma, he who has acquired wisdom. The weakening of the body means that the intellectual faculties of the man can now take precedent and gain descendancy. Now, the first of the oral tradition to be edited and written was formulated by Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who was called Rabbi the Prince. He arranged all the information into six orders of the Mishnah. <clears throat> they were then subdivided and arranged into a total of 60 tractates. <coughs> Excuse me. The 60 tractates are 
the completed works of the six orders of the Mishnah. The Me'iri, in his introduction to Pirkei Avot, states that the honorific term that we give to someone called Gon was bestowed on someone who has mastered all 60 tractates of the Mishnah. The Gematria, the numerical value of the word Gon, is 60. Another example of the number 60 can be found in the blessings bestowed upon the Jewish nation by the descendants of Aaron, the priests. <clears throat> they are referred to as what we call Birchot Kahanim, the priestly blessings. These blessings are made up of three verses containing 60 letters. Even today, they are still a Torahic obligation. When the priests bless the people, they raise both of their hands and face the people. The Mishnah states that there are 30 bones in a human hand. Twice 30, again, equals 60. Now, the priestly blessings contain 60 letters and 15 words. The letter Samach has a numerical value of 60 and is the 15th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. When one spells out the letter Samach, Samach Mem Chaf, Samach has numerical value of 60, Mem 40, Chaf 20, altogether they equal 120, alluding to the double blessing that one receives by relying on God. <clears throat> when the letter is spelled out, it is an acronym for the words Samach, Salach, to forgive, Machol, pardon, and Kafar, to atone. These 60 letters, the Birchat Kohanim, are alluded to in the verse in Shir HaShirim, chapter 3, verse number 7, which states concerning the bed of King Solomon, Shlomo Melech. It says, Behold the bed of the king of peace. Sixty of Israel's mightiest warriors surround it. The sixty warriors that the verse is referring to are the sixty letters of Birchat Kohanim, of the priestly blessing. <coughs> it is told, <coughs> excuse me, of the holy Baal Shem Tov, that his soul agreed to descend into this world only if it was accompanied by sixty tzaddikim, his devoted and supported ordained students. Also, the 60 queens are mentioned in the Song of Songs, chapter 6, verse number 8. In the temple, in the holy temple, before one would bring his sacrifice, he would place his hands, somech yadov, exerting his full weight on his sacrifice and confess his sins. By exerting himself for this mitzvah of smicha, one would become so identified with his sacrifice that he felt he was actually offering himself to God Almighty. The Talmud, the Gemara and Brachos 57b lists many examples of matters that are related to the number 60. Egypt is 1 60th of Kush. Kush is 1 60th of the world. <clears throat> the world is 1 60th of Gan. Gan is 1 60th of, of, of uh, Eden, of Aden. Aden is 1 60th of Gehenna, of Purgatory. There are also illusions of this idea of 160th, and that dreams are 160th of prophecy. <clears throat> Sleep is 160th of death. The weekly Shabbat is 160th of Olam Haba, of the world to come. Fire is 160th of Gehenna, again purgatory. And the sweetness of honey is 160th of the manna of the heavenly food that fell for the Jews in the desert during the 40 years of their travels. We also have a belief that when you visit a sick person, by visiting him you take away 1 60th of their illnesses. Now the word samach denotes the support given by a teacher who is a devoted student. A teacher serves to give the student the ability and insight to properly decide the halakha, the law. In fact, the gematria of the Hebrew word halacha is 60. The number 60 is found 60 times in Tanakh. There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. The word miracle in Hebrew is spelled nun samach, nes. When one is bent over the letter nun, then that's a sign of humility and that brings one to miracles. At a Jewish wedding, it is customary for the groom to give the bride a ring, which is the shape of a samach. The ring signifies the groom's uncompromising support for his bride. 
She circles around him seven times under the chuppah as a skula, as a protection for a good life. The characteristic of encircling is constant. What she is doing is she is saying to her groom, my commitment to you will be constant, encompassing your whole being regardless of the highs and the lows of our relationship. The Rebbe states that marriage is a union of two halves of the same soul, forming a perfect circle, a match made in heaven, but played out in this natural world, signified by the number seven. The letter Samach being the 15th letter in the Hebrew alphabet hints that the union of the Yud added to man's name and the He added to a woman's name, which is an allusion to the name of God. Again, changing the word Esh, fire, to both man and woman. The Yud and He together have a numerical value of 15, which resides between a man and his wife when they merit to realize the secret of the transcendent circle of the Samach. Now the letter Samach, much like the letter Mem, was a proof that was found in the Luchos, that the tablets of the Ten Commandments, that was a proof that they were written by the hand of God, <clears throat> and that the donut in the center of these letters were suspended in thin air and did not fall out. As I mentioned, that the Samach is the 15th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 15 also alludes to Tisha B'Av, pardon me, Tu B'Av, the 15th of Av, considered to be one of the happiest days of the year. It was a time when young men and women would go out to the fields looking for a mate, and there they would dance around in a circle, Samach. The 15th of the month is full and is the zenith of the Jewish calendar. May we continue to look to God for our support and merit the complete circle of life with the coming of Mashiach Tzikainu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and be well. Have a great Shabbat.